in Kyoto, Japan for a few days and apparently this here is the best thrift store in Kyoto. It's a little mom and pop store. Let's let's take a peek. This place, Arc Kyoto, seems really popular, especially in terms of finding really old, I guess, antique style items. Like, look at this. Obviously, some kind of antique cabinet here. And they've got it for as low as 2,000 yen. What? This is actually... <laughs> I literally, I don't even know what this is. This reminds me of the apothecary table from Friends. What? Right outside already, there's a lot of really... This here's a little expensive. This is about 100,000 yen, so about, give or take, $1,000, depending on the exchange rate. This... Oh, no way! This is for, like, making mochi. Japanese rice cake and whatnot. They've even got the hammer for it right here. Okay, already out of the gate, this is by far one of the most unique thrift stores that I've had the chance to come across. I am loving this. So let's just start outside here. Dishwashers aren't super, super common in Japan, but to be able to find one for around $100 is not bad. And look at this, 20 bucks for this table. It is, <laughs> it's, it's kind of incredible actually. I can't decide whether I love it or whether I think it's ostentatious or gaudy, but look at that design. If you had that in your house or office or something, there's no way in the world that anybody would think that you got that for 2,000 yen, which is like $20. That is incredible. What, what is this storage for? What is this? Whatever it is, it's only 5,000 yen, and I kind of want it as well. There's a retro sofa back here for $30. So if you're ever in Kyoto and you want to build out an entire Japanese retro office, you could grab this guitar for what I'm assuming is probably, yep, three bucks. Three dollars for this guitar. That is 300 yen for that guitar, and that is amazing to me. And then a retro sofa for 30 bucks. Grab yourself this retro sofa and that table, and you are pretty much at a little bench here for 3,500. Let's take a peek inside the shop. So a lot of it is just appliances and whatnot over here. So let's start right at the entrance. Got some Cups. I'm actually more than anything just really taken aback and surprised by the prices on everything. It's like they really want to get it out of the shop, so everything is priced super, super cheap. I've actually been low key thinking, okay, I don't need the SWAT patch, but I've been low key thinking about getting a vest like this for some time just to carry all my batteries and whatnot for photography, so that's not too bad at all. And an entire thing. Matomete, <laughs> 300 yen. So matomete 300 yen means for this whole thing, it's three bucks. You can get the entire thing of golf balls for 300 yen. I'm telling you, they are really pricing this stuff to go. Oh wow. <laughs> 2,000 yen. These are typically used for Japanese like boys day ceremony and they're put on display in the house. But to see that for 2000 yen when the base price of something like that is closer to several hundred dollars is again, quite interesting. The fact that this place has so many uniques and this little goat, which is also 300 yen. This must be a very valuable goat considering the other things that are 300 yen in here. 500 yen for this case. What have we got here? Feels like it's a card case. Looks like this is for the old Japanese style card games, which is appropriate considering that we are in Kyoto, the home of Nintendo, which is one of the biggest makers of those old Japanese cards and whatnot. Just notice this old tool chest. <laughs> For 2,000 yen, look at it, it's even got old too. Are you kidding? They're probably selling it just like this too, with the tools in it and everything. The box itself is barely holding together. I'm almost nervous to open it. Look at this. What in the, oh my goodness. 
Look at these. This is just absolutely bonkers. Oh, I am so excited about this. Like we've got a little plastic tape measure here, so obviously it's not super, super old, but it still works fairly smoothly as well. Oh, this is incredible just to come across something like this. Like, look at this thing. And then you've got an amp over here, which with how cheap everything else has been, I am genuinely just so curious. I don't see a price on it anywhere, but I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's probably 10 bucks. What is your guess? Let me know in the comments down below. And then we got old albums and whatnot here as well. Oh, wow. What are we, we got scrolls? What kind of scrolls do we have? Oh, they've gotta be art. They've gotta be art. I don't wanna like unfurl it and completely destroy it, but let's see if we can open it up. Maybe just a tiny bit. Like, look at the condition of these. Oh, wow. I'm actually really far too nervous to completely unfurl these, and I don't want to rip and destroy them, so I'm not going to open these up. But they exist. They exist right here, and they're awesome and beautiful. And again, if you want to set up that retro office using the sofa and whatnot out there, this is a great space for it. What? Back here we have a lot of furniture. Look at these shelves, it's absolutely beautiful for Ichiman Nisan. So around, again, give or take $100 CD rack. That is 3,000 yen, 30 bucks for a CD rack. I'm on, okay, you'd think that by this point of being in here, I'd be a little more accustomed to the prices on everything and a little less surprised. But again, we have an electric guitar back here for 1,800 yen. That is less than 20 bucks for an electric guitar. Oh, it is so tempting, but I also do not need to be filling my house with more stuff. My house already has plenty of stuff. This is always the biggest challenge to coming into these thrift stores because there's always something, really more than anything, I want that giant table out there. I think I've decided the table and the sofa, I want them both, but I'm not gonna be able to fit those into the vehicle that I've come here in, which is a tiny little K camper van and cards. We have cards. I love thrift stores, so I've been through a lot of thrift stores in Japan, but I am seriously surprised and kind of excited about this one. This might be one of the most unique and best priced thrift stores that I have seen in all of Japan so far. And in fact, you know what? I'm just noticing something over here. If I am not mistaken, the Canon Slidester 300 is an old slide projector. <laughs> it is, oh my lord. And it's got me curious about this box that is under it as well. This, is this what I, no. Oh, this is an old real, oh no way. That is crazy. I feel like if you were to buy something like this, you could probably resell it online for way, way more. There's definitely people who are searching for stuff like this. And again, I feel like any of the really, really good stuff, they're not putting prices on, but things like this or this old tool chest, like it's not in great condition as you can see, but it would be one of those ones that would be absolutely so satisfying to watch somebody fix up on YouTube and rebuild. And I feel like this is the kind of thing that if you were to buy it and sell it on an online auction or something, it would definitely go for higher than 2,000 yen. Same with this right here. Also, plain skateboard deck. This place is awesome, super small. I'd love to compare and contrast it against a bigger shop somewhere else in Kyoto or nearby. I really do love this table. It's too bad that I live so far from here and I still genuinely cannot believe that this guitar is three bucks. Hi. 
heartbreaking as it is, no, the guitar was not 300 yen. It was actually considerably more expensive. I'm glad I asked instead of just putting it on the counter and then making them feel the pressure. Also would have been nice to get it real cheap. Anyway, anyway, I don't usually link the exact thrift stores, but that one I'm gonna link in the description. I got the mini camper van again and the weather's starting to get kind of, all right, let's get on the road. For all the thrift stores we've been to, I've never been to one in Kyoto before. So I'm actually really glad that the one that we started with was unique and interesting and whew, let's get going. I found a bigger shop for us to go to, but I also came across this really tiny shop right here, which seems really interesting and let me and the Google reviews are on point. So let's take a quick peek at this place. And you know what, before we do, I'm gonna take a quick second to give some love to our sponsor who is supporting this video, NordVPN. For clarification, this is a paid advertisement. You probably know NordVPN. You might even be using them, but in case you are new to VPNs and don't know what they are or what they do, the simplest explanation is that they can make your computer or device, whatever you're using, look like it is in a different location or different country. It can be super helpful when it comes to some of those pesky region locks on content, enabling you to access content and videos and whatnot from other countries, perhaps on your favorite streaming service that you otherwise would not be able to gain access to. But I personally use NordVPN for two main things. Number one, and quite possibly the most important, is any time that I am using public Wi-Fi because it helps keep my data encrypted and keep me safe, especially at cafes and large public events that have Wi-Fi because without the VPN and its encryption, using public Wi-Fi can really feel like just hanging out in the Wild West. And number two, you remember international travel, that thing we used to do where we would visit other countries? It's slowly starting to feel like that's coming back. Well, looking like your search is coming from within the country that you were looking to go to can often yield cheaper hotels and flights, so another great go-to use for the VPN. Now, I keep NordVPN on all of my devices, and if you want to give it a shot, as well, you can go to my unique URL down in the description box below and use the code Tokyo Lens. That'll let them know that I sent you. Another huge benefit is that NordVPN has a 30 day money back guarantee, which means you can try it risk free. Thank you so much to NordVPN for supporting this channel and these videos. That wraps up the sponsored segment. Let's, uh, let's go check out that thrift shop. <laughs> This is the place here, and just as I got here, they closed, <laughs> so unlucky. We were right there. We were right there. Ah, oh, Aoi. Apparently the owner of this place is a really cool and interesting guy. Like a bunch of the reviews, we're talking about the owner, not even the shop, the owner, and that the bumper's coming off that Mercedes, and it is starting to rain, so why don't we jump on the road and see if we can't find a bigger thrift store. So we've come out to book off Bazaar, Super Bazaar, it's a Super Bazaar. So it's suggested by the name, Book Off is obviously well known for their books, but this Super Bazaar, this is the biggest Book Off Super Bazaar I think I've seen yet. It's got a ton of clothes. How are we looking on prices? So we've got about 700 yen for a t-shirt there. Are they all around that price? Yeah, we around 700 yen. We got jackets and whatnot over here looking again about 700 yen for a jacket okay all right first and foremost i want to take a quick peek at the camping section because i'm actually going out right now to spend a few days at an abandoned village out in the middle of nowhere to meet a hermit why is everything 737 yen that is a very very specific number and I might need to camp out, which is why I have brought the tiny camper van with me. But, okay, I'm gonna come back and look at all the camping stuff at leisure later on. That is, that is a lot of sleeping bags. How much are they charging for the 400 yen, 464 yen for a sleeping bag. Okay, I definitely don't need more camping stuff than I've brought, but we'll, we'll come back. So down here we have bags, a ton of golf gear. Look at all the tennis stuff. It's quite the racket they're running here. 
This place is huge. We have aisles and aisles and aisles of clothing. This entire row down here is just surfboards and snowboards and everything like that. Tons and tons of kids clothing and oh, they have a buddy son backpack. But it looks like we have appliances and musical instruments and everything down this way. But before we get there, it seems we've got some yukata and kimono and whatnot. It looks like there's even more down here. I also kind of love this little jade-esque dragon. Once again, for only 500 yen. Again, it's so hard not to buy this stuff that you don't need because I know my house will get filled. The one downside is the speakers in this place are insanely loud and everywhere, but there are a ton of kimono over here. Wow, what are we looking at on average kimono prices? That is super cheap. 810 yen for this one. Looking at about 1,380 yen for this one. Some of these are really, really nice. Again, 810 yen for this. There's such a massive kimono section. All the ones over here are men's kimono, about 17. Men's kimono tend to be a lot more plain and less interesting than women's kimono. We got all the obi and everything over here. And then this entire area is going to be cups and houseware. And for as much as I search, I am never, not never, rarely able to find any Fire King or anything like that. I recently found a Fire King cup at one of these shops down in Southern Japan in Kagoshima. But unfortunately, they wanted something like 50 or 60 bucks for it, which just did not feel reasonable whatsoever. Let's take a look at what they're charging for guitars and whatnot over here. Going from about two to $500 for these. And I love stuff like this. An ice cream maker for 550 yen. Another one for 500. What is with all the ice cream makers? We have an entire drum set here for 132,000. So roughly, again, with exchange rates, it's really hard to give an accurate number, but somewhere around a grand give or take. A ton more instruments down here. Every time I come into a place like this, there's two things I look for. Number one, I want to find the junk drawers for electronics. And number two, I want to find the toys section. Got a $14 projector here. And it's not even marked as junk. It would actually work. That's it's not terrible at all. Little bins like this with VHSC tapes and mini discs. You know, I really liked mini discs. We didn't have a lot of them in Canada. They were really common in Japan. But when I found out that I had to dub them in the same way that you would dub a tape, I quickly gave up on using my mini disc player. But I feel like these are the bins here where we'd be likely to find an old mini disc player or, oh my lord, when I first came to Japan, these like portable dictionaries for English Japanese translation, everybody used these. Now we have cell phones. It's amazing how many things cell phones have replaced. What in the world have we got here? Some kind of cassette going in here. It's a Casio FD. 10 floppy drive floppy disk drive unit fd10 i honestly have no idea what this is if you have any clue what this floppy disk drive unit is drop it in the comments i could also totally look it up but i think if you have experience with it that would be way more fun for me to hear your experience that's the section that we started in. Pretty much everything over here is books. All the way down here is CDs. Down here we have CDs, books, and games. And it's around here that we get into the fun stuff, into the toy section. Like, look at this. Look at, oh my, $500 for that. 50,000 yen for this, wow. Go big or go home, right? Japan absolutely loves their figures. And I, my little brother is really into that stuff. So when he first came to Japan, he spent an unbelievable amount of figures. In fact, I think we have a video about that. So I will link it up above. But then we've got the Purareru section over here. Purareru is basically Pura plastic reru rail. 
So plastic rails and these are really popular in Japan as well. Japan actually has a really big hobby train building subculture. You can see basically everything you would need here. This is one of the biggest like model train sets I think I've seen on display anywhere in Japan ever. And you can actually do, you can rent it. You can try it out. 30 minutes for 300 yen or 60 minutes for 600 yen. And announcements. I always end up spending a disproportionate amount of time in the toy section because there's always really neat stuff. Sometimes you can find these in the gacha machines, like the coin machines, but they're about the same price, about 450, 500 yen usually for one of those. But I spend so much time in the toy sections because Japan has such amazing toy culture. There are so many toys. Like if you come out to a place like this, one of the major thrift stores or recycle shops, you can always find incredible stuff sometimes even at decent prices and i always end up getting really really distracted by the nerf because i'm a huge nerf fan and most certainly have more nerf than any reasonable adult should have but the toy and game culture in japan is absolutely is this jumanji it feels like whatever it is it's so heavy it's probably mahjong the toy and game culture here, if I can finish my sentence, is spectacular. And I feel like having the opportunity to grow up as a kid in Japan must be an amazing experience if you have access to so many of these toys. Like, I'm from Canada, and in North America, we had some great toys growing up in the 90s. But honestly, it pales in comparison to looking at an aisle like this where I don't even know where to start. I am a full grown adult and I could spend hours and hours probably in this aisle alone just looking for cool stuff to play with. Like, look at this. This DX, what? Like, come on. Oh, this is just so much fun, honestly. There are just so many and you know, you know each of these definitely separates off into its own toy and then you can put them all together into one like Megazoid toy, like so much fun. Like honestly, if you're a fan of like Japanese characters, look at this, the number of Ultraman things that are anywhere from 100 yen to 300 yen right here, the entire lineup of monsters and whatnot. If you get into the main stuff like Godzilla, it tends to be more expensive. For example, this particular Godzilla is $200 just for that one, but still the amount of stuff that is just available, the pure volume of it is just spectacular. Should I stop nerding out? over toys now. I feel like I should stop nerding out over toys. Let's take a peek and see what some of the other toys, toys, we're still looking at toys, still toys and figurines, still toys and figurines. A lot of this at this point is just figurines. What do we got in here? Still toys and figurines. That's another one. Like if you are into the figurine culture, Japan is most certainly gotta be the world capital for figures and plushies too like goku hello goku how are you my man i hope you're doing good aside from the toys like if we come back for example to the electronics area there are used ipads and all the phones and whatnot you're not necessarily going to get them super duper cheap like an iphone 12 here you're looking at about 48,000 yen, so you know, four, it was like four or five hundred dollars on average for some of the used phones. They do have cheaper old ones for like two, three hundred. Wow, you can get yourself an old iPhone 7 for an old iPhone 6S for 8,800 yen. That's not too bad. And this is another one, like Japan has a really active culture when it comes to Polaroid cameras. You can still buy Polaroid cameras everywhere. You can get the film for them really easily. I haven't been back home in so many years that I don't know if that culture still exists overseas. So let me know in the comments if it does. 
I would say all in all, this is a fairly stark contrast against that recycle shop or thrift shop that we started out in this morning. Do you have a favorite? Do you prefer the small ones? Do you prefer the big ones? Again, let me know down in the comments. If the tour of this place felt just a little bit too short to you, I didn't even know where to start. There was just so much to look at. I will link some other thrift store videos on here and on Tokyo Lens Explore, which is where I tend to do longer walkthroughs of stuff as well. Let me know again in the comments down below which one of these was your favorite. And a huge thank you to NordVPN for supporting this video and this channel. Once again, everything will be linked down below and I will see you guys again real soon.